What is the celestial object on Mars? Is it a satellite? Is it a planet in the solar system? While we're still trying to figure out what this is, whatever it is, this would be a dominant feature on Mars if you were standing where the image was captured and looks to us like planet Venus as it's viewed in the northern hemisphere towards the winter months. These NASA photos from the Perseverance rover are showing a lot of black specks apparently in flight. These are more than likely to be black specks of Martian dirt on the camera lens rather than anything technical. But we have heard some theories that it's actually a bunch of drones swarming about the red planet, but what do you guys think about that one? We have tweeted NASA and we will let you know what they say. Now what if we were to tell you that the squatter man of the petroglyph record is still being worshipped in its pre-godlike form? The Dogon tribe of Mali and Burkina Faso still worship the Taurus field of the squatter man in no uncertain terms. Not only this, they literally tell us that they saw this manifestation in the sky. Wait till you hear this. Each large district has a Hogan or spiritual leader within the Dogon tribes and there is a supreme Hogan leader for the whole country. In his dress and behaviour, the Hogan symbolises the Dogon myth of creation, to which the Dogon relate much of their social organisation and culture. Their metaphysical system, which categorises physical objects, personifies good and evil, and defines the spiritual principles of the Dogon personality. The Dogon religious life is heightened every 60 years by a ceremony known as Sige, which occurs when the star Sirius appears between two mountain peaks. Before the ceremony occurs, young men of the Dogon tribe go into seclusion for three months. During this time, they speak a secret language. The inspiration behind these actions rests on the belief that some 3,000 years ago, amphibious beings from Sirius visited the Dogon people. The ceremonial headdress of the Dogon is a clue. This was a representation of the apparent visitors from the stars. This is the same manifestation seen far and wide across our planet at this time. The two mountain peaks where the star appears acted as a blinder to the synchrotron radiation. When the light faded, the distant star Sirius becomes the source of the worship, and the three months seclusion that they undertake is a gesture to the many years spent in the cave systems of the Earth, trying to survive the cataclysmic occurrence of the Squatterman. If we were to put the Sirius connection to one side, then the Dogon belief system goes as follows. According to them, there was once an object that was the brightest object in Earth's sky, and it had a much dimmer companion, which has a 50-year elliptical orbit around the brighter object. From oral traditions, the Dogon confirmed their affiliation with extraterrestrial bodies which visited Earth some many years ago. According to the tribe, ugly amphibious beings in the form of mermaids and mermen from the system known as Nomos visited planet Earth. The Nomos lived on a planet that rotated around other stars in the system. The Dogon recount how the Nomos, after descending down to the Earth in an art-like structure, they gave the tribe information about the solar system. They commemorate the 50-year elliptical orbit with the Sige celebration, held every 60 years, and it is unclear why the Dogon celebrate the rotational year every 60 years and not 50 years. However, since the Sige celebration was in 1967, the next celebration is expected to happen in 2027 and they believe that the celebration of the rotation comes to renew the Earth. It is entirely possible that they are referring to a planet like Mars or Venus, having once orbited Jupiter or Saturn before a catastrophic event, but unclear who the ugly visitors may be, perhaps Martian refugees, and perhaps a reason why gods were given animal facial features with humanoid bodies, as they simply couldn't bear the ugliness. Carl Sagan once weighed in on his take of the Dogon tribe and their supposed celestial cognizance by disavowing the idea that they could have come from otherworldly beings. The Dogon were aware of Jupiter's moons and planet Saturn, along with its rings, but Sagan said that their lack of awareness of any other planets in our solar system was evidence enough that they were only reiterating a few pieces of knowledge given to them by their interaction with French anthropologists. However, 
Sagan's cursory analysis of the Dogon did not touch upon the fact that their knowledge of the Ceres star system was represented in 400-year-old artefacts. Nor did he acknowledge their understanding of subatomic particles and their theory of the universe's creation, where they literally describe a cataclysmic event from an eyewitness perspective. It strikes us that this was a solar system event, much closer than conventional understanding would have us believe. It wasn't Sirius, it was the unmoved mover, the planet Saturn, the ancient sun god. The Dogon refer to them as the Numos, beings that were mostly aquatic, probably because the light of the heavens descended into the horizon, or in this case the sea, but were also mobile on land. Appearing only to a small sect within the Dogon tribe, because extensive contact with humans would have had a negative impact on these people's well-being. In many accounts, the Dogon speak of the Nomos as being non-physical beings. In this sense, the Nomos are to the Dogon what Osiris, Isis and Horus were to the dynastic Egyptians. Amphibious godlike beings appeared in other ancient cultures outside of the Dogon, ancient civilizations all across the world from Babylonia to Greece to Southern America, and even the Slavic nations depicted aquatic beings in their mythology at this time. One interesting connection that some have drawn with the Dogon is in that of the Dogu in Japan. Alternative theories point to the statues of the Dogu, whose name is very similar to the Dogon, that resembles an astronaut or being in a spacesuit and dates back to 10,500 years before Christ. The Dogu are thought to have arrived in flying ships, bringing with them written language and many aspects of civilization to the Japanese. Interestingly, in ancient Mesopotamian lore, there is a deity known as Dagon, or Dagan, depicted as a merman or fish god, an early form of Enki. And this depiction can also be seen in the Hebrew Bible. Now, consider their shape. An assimilation of perception occurs from the petroglyph record into these times. They form a squatter man's shape which is unmistakable. These are the shapes that they saw in the sky and as time unfolded, they thought it was godlike beings in the sky as an assimilation of thought occurs. These people were effectively trapped, staying in one location for very long periods of time. Generation after generation with this dominant figure in the sky, the only interesting thing to look at because of how dominant it appeared. These people began to worship it as it appears. It wasn't serious. It was the planets in the solar system. The Dogon's connection with ancient Egypt is the most intriguing, and it's an essential argument in their defence from the criticism of Carol Sagan and pragmatists. The very language that the Dogon used to describe the Sirius star system consists of ancient Egyptian words that have not been used for centuries. Does that not blow your mind or what? Other similarities between the two cultures can be seen in the way they organised their civilizations, such as the creation of an upper and lower kingdom and a 360 day calendar. The relationship between Isis and that particular point in the sky. The Dogon do not have a written language even to this day and they pass down their histories to select members of the tribe by word of mouth, word by word. But what do you guys think of these connections anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.